Bienvenue to welcome to reporters here on France 24. In this edition, climate change is affecting everywhere, even the paradise that is the Maldives. The island leaders have long urged the world to act on the aims of the Paris Accords of 2015 in reducing emissions of greenhouse gases that are effectively putting the island paradise at risk. By 2050, the Maldives could be lost to the sea. Our reporter Alban Alvarez has been there. He joins us now. Uh, Alban, facing the risks and the dangers, um, would you say that the people in the Maldives, the Maldives themselves, have actually been, well, let's be harsh, climate friendly? Well, when we talk about the Maldives immediately, we think about like a paradisiac landscape. But in reality, the country uh, suffers from a major issue, which is climate change, but also um, the plastic pollution. Waste management is clearly not implemented into the country. Most of the trash, for example, is sent to an artificial island, which is now a toxic bomb in the middle of the ocean. And this bomb, we managed to approach it for this report. Indeed, it is a difficult thing to, to envisage. Let's take a look then at this report by Alban Alvarez. That whole lot was the playground. It was a beautiful beach. This is where we played football when we were kids, when we were like 10 years old. From this part to the further end was the beach, and where we are standing now is the middle of the playground. Jofar Khalid has spent his entire life on this small island and has watched its beaches disappear into the ocean. To protect our beach, we built that wall all around the lagoon. I realize now how much this place has eroded and how much beach we have lost, and I'm deeply saddened by that. The sea has been devouring Tulushfu, one of the 1,200 islands of the Maldives, for several decades. And now, this erosion threatens the land. Hundreds of palm trees lining the coast have already disappeared. Every day, a small bit is lost to the waves, as trees and palms are brought down. Once the trees are gone, the beach doesn't have the power to protect itself anymore. What's left here now soon will be washed away. Here's the beach as it was before. I wish that it could one day look like this again. We have lots of fond memories of this place where everybody comes and hangs out. And when you see this now, it's very sad. Tulushfu Island is just one of a dozen examples. Bodhura, Kuretuparu, these patches of paradise have already disappeared from the map. It's a climate and humanitarian emergency for which the countdown has already begun. In October 2009, at a depth of six meters, members of the Maldivian government held history's first underwater council of ministers. This astonishing action was a cry to the world to take drastic measures against global warming and the rising sea levels that threaten to submerge the Republic of the Maldives. This archipelago, located in the heart of the Indian Ocean, has 26 atolls. 1,200 pristine sandy islets lie less than a meter above sea level. At the current rate, 80% of the archipelago will be submerged by 2050, while marine pollution is slowly decimating its delicate biodiversity. This heavenly web of islands exists on borrowed time. In the northern part of the Maldives lies the private island of Kudahura. Nearly 150 islets in the archipelago are operated by luxury hotels like this one, which have often been accused of contributing to the country's pollution. 
But in recent years, many of these tourist sites have taken an eco-responsible turn to protect their lagoons. These fragments are alive and from a colony, so we will place them in the frame. It will actually encrust into the frame and then grow into be its own colony. So in around three years, it fu this frame should be fully grown. Alejandra and Mani are marine biologists. They work in partnership with this hotel on a coral cuttings grafting project on these artificial structures. These little animals with their mineral skeletons could help save the Maldives. So whenever the waves are breaking near the island, it actually absorbs all the energy. So it prevents it from er erosion and things like that. So that's how coral reefs protect the islands. Due to warming oceans, 80% of the country's corals have been wiped out. But at the foot of these luxury villas... Can you please monitor that frame for photos? Hope seems to be reborn. These coral transplants come from the most resistant species and can survive the warmer currents. These guys are actually doing really well in this area and we normally have a lot of fish uh, swimming around there because it protects them and as well it provides uh, a lot of food for them. It gives a lot of hope, yes. Especially after how much coral we lost and the bleaching and everything, this definitely brings a little bit of, of hope and happiness around. <laughs> the hotel complex even has a marine studies center where the collected data is sent. This French engineer has created state-of-the-art software for this program, which monitors its development using artificial intelligence. Each little square means the computer has automatically detected a coral. Therefore, it tells us what species it detected, and the dead coral is in green. When we used to analyze the growth of corals, we had to go underwater, dive with a board and note all the colonies one by one. Today the studies have gone to the next level and we can now automatically analyze 70,000 colonies at once with the computer. The Maldives also made the choice to scale up in an attempt to protect their inhabitants. On the island of Mali, the capital, Nearly 230,000 people already crowd just over two square kilometers. In order to resist the rising waters and house its growing population, the authorities decided to build an artificial island created entirely from scratch. This is Hulhumale, the city of hope in the Vehi. Haseem Khan is one of the architects in charge of the project. What we did was we reclaimed this, this island, which was non-existent before. It was water. So we reclaimed it to a height of two meters above the water level to make this artificial island. This titanic project came to life in 2001, and 20 years later, the first small island was built with industrial and residential areas. 45,000 inhabitants have already moved here. Haseem agreed to take us across this bridge, which is still prohibited for the public, to show us the second islet of Hulhumale. The plan here is to build a business district, a marina, a university, and new hotels to attract more tourists. We are going to use that sand for reclamation and other construction uh, purposes. And where this sand is coming from? This is the, the, the sand we dig, we, we, we dig from the sea. The final construction of Hulumale will have required 10 million cubic meters of sand. The total cost would be $35 billion, part of which is financed by China. A strategic move to strengthen the Maldives' position in the Indian Ocean. And you see this house, housing blocks, you see these buildings over there, they are all uh, residential buildings coming up which is already under construction. Phase two is also targeted for, uh, you know, 100,000 people. Um, you can say it's, a, it's an entire city. The construction of Hulumale should be complete by 2035. But this project to save the Maldives from an ecological tragedy comes at another cost. 
and ironically, it's environmental. Reclamation may be not the only answer. I mean, now in this day in, and this with, with the existing technology, we should try to look at how people can live over the water instead of reclamation, because of course reclamation has it, its downside of you know you know affecting the, our coral reefs and and the underwater habitat. The artificial islands of the Maldives are not always used wisely. Hassan Bebe created the association Save Our Beaches 10 years ago. It fights environmental pollution. Here we have our plastic collection. Um, this is uh, the collection of this month. Every day, like um, after cleaning the beach, maybe after an hour, if you go to the beach, you will find something on the shore, for sure. Like mostly, mostly it's found plastic, yeah. It is a very sad story, so that's, that's why I can't keep stop it. Like, I couldn't stop it. I, I've been, I've, we've been doing it for like more than 10 years now, so still we are going. We will do it until we find a solution. <laughs> what to do? <laughs> this plastic ends up on the beaches. I feel like it's not never ending job it is. <laughs> but especially in the ocean, where it's ingested by marine fauna and contaminates the entire food chain. But Bebe wants to show us one of the biggest battles he's facing. A few kilometers away from the capital by boat lies the artificial island of Tilafushi. We are getting to the dump area now. Oh my God. Nicknamed the Trash Island, Tilafushi was built by the government to contain garbage from all over the archipelago. It is a mountain of waste floating in the ocean, overflowing from every side. Sometimes they even can't stop the burn because now there is so much gas inside it. It keeps burning it's itself as well. When they take trash from the excavator, there's a lot of them it's getting into the ocean. Up to 400 tons of garbage is dumped here every day by boats. The toxic material that is released from the waste contaminates the soil and flows into the Indian Ocean. This is not our colors of the lagoons. It is, the color is coming from all trash and pollution. Like our Lagoons looks like turquoise water, actually. The blame goes to everyone today. The government also, they're not taking in the right actions or they're not working towards in finding the solution for our garbage in the Maldives. And even the tourism sector, um, there are a few islands which are trying to do uh, waste management, proper waste management in the islands, they are trying, um, but most of the other resorts, they are not doing it. Despite the hazards, man-made island projects are still flourishing in the Maldives. Now, it's a race against time to find the fragile balance between two conflicting ideals, the development of a nation or the protection of its environment. Well, our reporter Alban Alvarez is still with us. Thank you so much for that uh, insight into what's happening in Maldives. Let's talk a little bit more then about the situation. 80% of the Maldives, uh, that's some 1,190 coral islands, stands at less than a metre above sea level. That's now. Um, how are the people of the Maldives reacting to the threat that they are facing from the sea? Well, we met several local activists to try to warn the, the authorities and educate the young generation. One of them is Shazia Sahid. Uh, she's a diving and surf instructor, and she tries to protect surfing spots, which are disappearing because of forts built in the ocean to prevent the erosion. Uh, it's and do you know what is happening to the surf breaks? What is happening to the surf breaks? 
getting destroyed. I want to have a place where our kids uh, will enjoy a good waves that we have enjoyed before. It's very disappointing because the people who are destroying it are Maldivians and they should know better than that to destroy their own home. It's such a shame that it, every year we're losing a part of this beauty due to, due to all these um, demands from all sorts of industries needing more land or to build things. It's really sad. Some voices of reason there from the Maldives. Let's go back to our reporter, uh, Alban. Uh, Alban, it was, uh, I think, about 10 years ago when the former president held a news conference actually underwater to try to highlight the problem the Maldives were facing. Um, 10 years on, we're in the same dilemma, aren't we? Yes, and this same president 10 years ago intended to create a sovereign found uh, in order to buy a new homeland to, to a foreign neighboring country. It was a kind of insurance policy uh, against climate change and to save Malivians from sea level rising. But this idea has never been put in place, never really been implemented. But it would have been quite challenging, in fact, to, to buy lands from another country. Uh, one solution seems to catch right now the attention of the authorities and even uh, the attention of the United Nations, the creations of sustainable floating cities, which will be a way to avoid reclamation, as we have seen in the report. It seems quite futuristic, but some resort islands are already using pilotes to, for their overwater bungalows at a, smaller, at a smaller scale, of course, not at the entire population. Indeed, and then thinking about that, though, it still means that you lose the beautiful islands that are the Maldives, unless, of course, something is done by the humans on this planet. And that's probably the challenge, getting them to change their ways. Uh, Alban Alvarez, thank you, sir, very much indeed for that insight into the challenge facing the Maldives right now. Uh, this is Reporters. Thank you for watching, of course. You can see it again via our website, france24.com. This is Reporters on France 24. Stay with us. Most of all, stay safe. <laughs>